Hello, I'm Chef Melissa and welcome to Tasting Sicilia. Today I'm making Sicilian rice balls known as arancine di riso. I'll be making a classic version with a saffron risotto and a beef ragu. So let's get started. I'm going to start by heating up the pan. Okay. And I'm adding extra virgin olive oil. And here I have carrot, onions, and celery into the first three ingredients that will be sauteed. The base of a good ragu is the sofrito, the carrot, celery, and onion. Important ingredients to bring flavor to the ground beef ragu. Okay. As you can see, the three ingredients are very finely minced. I put them in a Cuisinart so that they would be very small pieces of carrot and celery especially. The onion tends to melt away in the sauce, but the carrot, if not cut small enough, will really remain whole. Okay, this looks about ready. We'll be transferring this mixture into the larger pot. Okay, now I get the gas back on. And I'm putting the ground beef, this is a grass-fed ground beef, inside the pan. And I'm just breaking up the meat with my spatula. I'm also going to add a touch more olive oil, but not too much. The meat itself has enough fat in it. I like to use 80% lean beef. So there is that 20% amount of fat in there. We have some nice caramelization on the beef, and now we're ready to deglaze. With red wine, of course. Okay, there we are. I'll let that evaporate. Okay, all the wine is evaporated. And I'm going to transfer the beef as well to the vegetable mixture. I'm just stirring up the ground beef and the vegetables. And I'm about to put in the tomato paste. Stir that in well. Now I add the garlic paste and the dried oregano, three bay leaves, and some chicken stock. It could be vegetable stock as well. Either one works. You can also use water, but the more flavor in the stock, the tastier the ragu will turn out. I'm going to let this ragu cook for about an hour, and meanwhile, I'll start making the risotto. We'll be doing a saffron risotto with saffron, Parmesan cheese, onion, white wine, arborio rice, olive oil, butter, and chicken stock. And for the risotto, we start with some extra virgin olive oil. You can also use clarified butter. Some chopped, finely chopped onions. Going to keep that on a medium flame. We want to sweat the onions. We don't want to get color or any brown on the onion. The main, the main objective is just to let them cook slowly for about 10 minutes. So our onions are almost ready. And in the meantime, I just want to salt our ragu. I waited a bit to do that so that the salt wouldn't dry out the ground beef. And now we're ready to add our risotto our rice. So we just want the rice to lightly toast in the bottom of the pan before we deglaze with white wine. Okay, 
And now I will deglaze with the white wine. And continue stirring. We want to keep stirring until all the wine is evaporated before we start adding stock. And now it's time to add the stock to the rice. Start with two ladlefuls. And we continue stirring. The first ladlefuls of stock are now absorbed. We're going to add some more. The whole idea of making a risotto is to keep stirring consistently for the whole time that we cook the rice and to keep adding stock. Every time that the stock gets absorbed into the rice, it helps the cooking proceed. And the stirring action is what allows the starches to exude from the rice and make the risotto creamy. Every time you notice that the rice has absorbed the stock, you add more stock. That's why we have a full pot here. And note that I keep the, the stock hot. You shouldn't be putting cold stock into the rice. It should always be, it should always be hot. And before we continue, I will add some of the saffron. I'm going to save some in case we feel it needs more later. You can see that beautiful yellow color. Okay, now I've stirred this risotto for about 20, 25 minutes and it's nice and creamy. It's perfectly cooked and we want to make sure not to overcook it because the the rice balls are going to be cooked again in oil. Uh, just to finish up, I put a little tab of, two tabs of butter and some grated cheese. This is grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, I have yet to add any salt to the risotto and the reason is that this cheese is quite salty so I like to taste it at this stage before, before adding salt. Again, you can always add in, but you can't take out once you've, once you've put the salt. And remember, throughout this whole process, you have to keep stirring. You never let the risotto sit and cook because it will stick immediately to the bottom of the pan and ruin the texture and flavor of the risotto. Now, the next step is we need the risotto to cool before we roll out the rice balls. Now it's time to roll the rice balls. I have the cooked saffron risotto, the beef ragu, and at the end of the cooking, I added in some peas to the ragu, which is a quite traditional filling for the rice ball. Uh, I have pecorino cheese from Sicily. It's a, it's, a, it's a young sheep's milk cheese, but you can always replace that with fontina cheese if you can't find pecorino. I have flour, egg, and breadcrumb. So let's get started. I take with my hand a, a ball of about this size of the rice, which is now well cooled down. Uh, the cooler the rice is, the easier it is to roll them. Okay, and I make, make the rice flat on my hand so that we have a surface of rice to work with. I then take a spoonful, a teaspoonful, of the beef ragu and put it in the center of the rice and I take two pieces of the pecorino cheese and add them there. Now I never said this is a very clean thing to do. You have to get in there and get your hands messy. You know it's part of the fun. Um, now here we go. We start rolling by just lifting the rice over and we make sure that we keep that ragu inside. The rice is still at a very sticky stage. 
and you just start forming it in a ball. It takes a little while to get the hang of it, but really not too difficult. Now we're about to bread the rice balls. So to do so, I first dredge them in a little flour and then dip them in egg and then they'll go into the breadcrumb and, and get coated with the, with the nice crunchy breadcrumb. Now we can fry. So we're at the final stage here of the rice ball preparation and we need to fry them. I have a mix here of some extra virgin olive oil and vegetable oil and I'll be frying the rice balls in them. Now, uh, the best way to, to know if your oil's at the right temperature is just to put one rice ball in as the sample, and if it's overly bubbly, then you know you have to turn down the heat just a, a touch. And if it's, you don't see any bubbles around the rice ball, well then the heat should go up a little bit. So here's what we do. Take a rice ball, and if you'd like to put it on this so you don't burn with your fingers, and right inside the oil. Okay, like so. As we add the other rice balls, we might need to put up the flame though. We are going to fry until the rice balls are nice and golden. Um, but that should be about four minutes, but the best way to check is not to time it, but to just look. So for example, this one is golden, but we want to go a little bit more. It's not a light golden, we're looking for a little darker golden. And I have some paper towels on a sheet pan waiting here so that the excess oil will drain off. Beautiful, look at them, look so pretty. And the objective here is not just to get the outside of the rice ball uh, crunchy and golden, but we also have to make sure the inside gets heated all the way through. Well, it looks perfect to me, the cheese is melted. Oh my gosh, they're perfect.